Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about why I think there's so much hype around AI and share a little bit of the research we've done and then talk a little bit about use cases because I think that's kind of where the rubber hits the road and talk about a little bit about today, a little bit about kind of tomorrow and some of the futuristic stuff and then kind of close by talking about how we've seen kind of bigger insurance companies approach this problem and what they've done to start to make some, some progress against this. So first, first thing is why do, why do we think this is a lot of hype? So what we're already seeing is that companies, despite the fact that we're very early in the journey of AI and insurance, what we see is that companies who are investing in this and performing a kind of investing in advanced analytics, and I'm going to use that term rather than AI throughout this because I think to the point earlier about let's not debate the definition, um, let's look at the value. Companies that are already investing in this are way outperforming their competitors financially across a bunch of different metrics. And I think that's a really important point to start with because I think that's what's driving a lot of the hype is that we see some of the early returns that carriers are realizing. And so that's generating the hype loop of like what's next, what's next, what's next. And I think the grounding in kind of business benefit is something that I, you know, people are starting to wake up to as we move from, um, you know, from lab to real life. Actually, generating economic benefit from this stuff is going to what's keep is going to be what you know what keeps this moving forward. And ultimately, the only reason to apply AI to a bunch of different use cases is because it's going to generate some type of economic benefit for the company. If not today, then you know within a couple of years. And we're already seeing that kind of people on the leading edge are are doing that. Now, the flip side of that. And I was saying earlier, I think this is, I find this pretty funny. So every year we do a survey of over a thousand different insurance executives from you know, 50 plus different carriers around the world. And we ask them a couple of questions. One of them is, are you investing in data and analytics technology? And everybody says yes. Next question we ask is, are you investing more than you did last year in this stuff? And everybody says yes. And then we say, do you think you're actually getting value from your investments? And basically, 85% of people say no. And so, and this has been true for the last five years. So everybody knows it's important. Everybody knows that when you do it really well, you generate a lot of benefits. But there's not really that many people who can you know, point to their income statement and say, here, here, and here is where we generated a huge uplift from the application of advanced analytics. And so, and the reason why this is happening, in our experience, you'll see some of them there, is doing this is actually really hard, right? This is not a bunch of data scientists sitting in a room, coming out with an algorithm, and then off we go and we make a bunch of money, right? This is a fundamental shift in the way companies think, act, behave, operate, and that takes a lot of time and a lot of skill from a lot of different groups in the organization. And that's a really tough thing to do, right? If you think of kind of 10 or 15 years ago, it was you know, CRM and people were talking about ERP systems and that was gonna be the next big thing. And there are companies that sank two, three billion dollars into putting those systems in and got nowhere, 